does it condone actions such as 9-11? Because you, usually when you bring up terrorism, people start to think about the Twin Towers, and you recently had the New York subway bomber. Does this have anything to do with Islam, Shay? No, it has nothing to do with Islam, and, uh, but we have to be honest that uh, perhaps in some of these cases we can clearly see that there may have been some Muslims either directly or indirectly involved. But Islam and Muslims is not the same. You got separated too? Yeah, ex exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, Islam is the faith system that is perfect and complete coming from God based upon scripture and revelation. Uh, Muslims are those who make the claim uh, to represent that. But, you know, when people uh, have been traumatized, uh, when people, uh, you know, have been oppressed, uh, it can make them mad, it can make them angry, it can make them crazy, uh, it can make them react in different ways. We don't justify that, but we say that uh, a Muslim who is uh, uh, angry, frustrated, uh, uh, crazy, can be manipulated, and if they do things that are wrong, uh, it's wrong. Wrong is wrong and right is right. Uh, but let us, let's, let's say uh, that um, we have to understand that uh, a person uh, who is put in a certain position, if you put a rat in a cage, if you put a cat in the corner, uh, if, you, if you corner a wild beast, how are they going to react? They're going to react instinctively. So I say that there are some Muslims who unfortunately have been placed in those conditions and they have reacted in a negative way, but Islam has nothing to do with that. And in the same way that uh, the, Oklahoma, uh, the Oklahoma bomber, okay, he was a Christian, a right-wing Christian, but we don't say, you understand me, that Christianity has anything to do with that. I mean, Hitler was a Christian. But we don't say that, we, that uh, Christianity had anything to do with that. Okay, the conquistadors, uh, they were Christians. But we don't say that, it's not, that uh, Christianity had anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the, the greatest tragedies uh, in the world were done in the name of religion. And uh, unfortunately, the Christian religion. But we don't blame Jesus Christ for that. So I think that to be very fair, uh, people need to be, uh, take an obs uh, objective uh, insight into the sources of Islam, which is the Quran and the prophetic uh, traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and be, uh, blessing be upon him. And we never found our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, doing any such actions like that. Therefore, Islam is not uh, uh, the villain. Uh, uh, the Muslims are, in this case, the victims. Now tell us also, is it true, because you hear this next word that I'm going to mention, isn't it true that Jesus, peace be upon him, and Moses, and the messengers of God, they call people to adhere to this word right now. Can you define it and explain it? Because then people will kind of settle and when they, once they realize what this actually means, Sharia. Because mm. when you say Sharia, they think, oh, the boogeyman's coming mm. to get you. We don't want no Sharia over here. But didn't Jesus, the tablets that he came with, I mean, Moses, the tablets that he came wasn't this Sharia? Wasn't this divine law? Can you explain this word? Yeah, let's, let's uh, try to understand uh, the word uh, Sharia um, from its origin in the Arabic language. It means to arrive at a watering place. You see, Sharia means a path. It literally means a path that leads to water. And water is essential for life. So what it means in the context of language is one thing. What it means in the context of Islamic legislation is another. It means that Islamic legislation leads to life, it leads to success, it leads to regulation, it leads to uh, a divine guidance. And that's the watering place of life. So Sharia is the system that should govern the Islamic State, and when the Islamic State influenced the world, Sharia had a very beautiful uh, meaning. Today, uh, the people that package words uh, can make anything that is beautiful ugly, can make anything that's ugly beautiful. So we can't believe the hype. You see, we have to go uh, back and make an assessment of the actual values and principles. Now, I think that Muslims should not be so naive or ambitious so as to think that we're going to bring uh, Islamic legislation inside of a society that already has legislation. That's conflict of interest. We can't do that. We bring the principles of Sharia from our hearts and in our minds, but we adapt to the society where we are. Why? Because we have to be good citizens and practical citizens, and being good and practical citizens mean obeying the law of the country that we live in. Tell us also, honor killings. You've heard this also. There's no honor in killing. This is something that's, that's a cultural phenomenon. It has nothing to do with Islam. Nothing to do with Islam. Absolutely nothing to do with Islam. What is the honor killing that people call it? So if somebody marries, if a girl from my tribe or my family marries somebody from another tribe or family to keep the honor we do something dishonorable? No, that's criminal. That's cultural. I don't care where it's done in the Muslim world. It's criminal. 
and it's cultural and has nothing to do with Islam. We need to separate that and put that to the side. Period. That's Moving it. On. Okay, good. I, I think many of the sincere, the humble-hearted, the open-minded, I mean, these are just clear-cut answers and they make sense, but someone might have heard that, you know, these Muslims are allowed to lie. Tukia, they call it or something. Tukia. Tukia. Mm. Explain this. What is this? Does it have anything to no, do with No, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man ghashana falaysa minna. He said, whoever, who is deceptive or lies to us is not from us. So we don't lie. We don't deceive. That's not honorable. We can't do that in the name of religion. Except the Prophet ﷺ said in maybe three cases. You know, if I become a captive of war and the people that capture me say, where's your leader? Where's your armaments? I'll tell them it's in that direction, although I know it's in that direction. So we can understand from a practical mm -hmm. purpose that we are legal to say we're, we're liable. We can say we're allowed to say something other than the truth in that uh, case of war. Uh, another case is to keep peace between two people. I was a witness of something. I'm the only witness of something. And if I were to say the truth, maybe I would exacerbate the conflict between these people. So I say, well, to be honest, I didn't really see that. Or another one, you know, in the morning, you know, when my wife is kind of like disheveled, you know, and her breath don't smell that good and so forth and so on. I say, sweetheart, you know, you look the most beautiful in the mornings. You know, it's not exactly truthful, yeah. but, you know, it's sort of like something that we live with as a life. So if we want to call that not saying exactly the truth, we can do that, but we're not allowed to lie or to deceive. No, Islam is a religion of truth, and we stand by the truth, even if it means losing our lives. This is amazing that even these details, even when you can exaggerate or, you know, uh, to bring peace between people, there's exceptions to these rules, but yes. in general, you Muslims need to speak the truth at all times. All times. Amazing, amazing, yes. amazing. Continuing on we're here with Sheikh Khalid Yassin, and all we ask is that you have an open mind, a humble heart, and the truth is clear. It's very simple to understand. Tell us now the next misconception. People see the woman in the veil, and they say, look, man, you're oppressing these women. Let her out of this. It's hot out there. What do we got to say? Well, first of all, uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So uh, if in America uh, women feel, uh, if men like to see women in G-strings, and women see themselves to be beautiful wearing G-strings, well, that's, that's their set of perceptions. That's their set of values. We don't accept that. Uh, we say that's demeaning. We say that's exploitive. Uh, but at the same token, um, uh, if that's the way people want to live their lives, we have to be tolerant about that. At the same token, there was a time 50 years ago when there, we saw nuns walking in the street, and they were dressed just like our Muslim sisters are, nuns, the, the Catholic uh, uh, sisters that are uh, attached to the church, and they were wearing the hijab, you know, they're covered from head to toe. And nobody whistled at them. Nobody said, hey, baby. No, because everybody understood that this is a religious woman, a woman of principle. So the same as our women are, they deserve that. And the thing I'd like to say is that who would have diamonds and pearls and gold and their certificates of deposit just sitting out on their table in the living room for the guests to see? No, they wouldn't do that. Where do they have them? They have them somewhere in a safety deposit box, covered, out of sight. Okay, because anything that is valuable is kept covered and out of sight. So our women is our gold, our pearl, our diamonds, you know, our certificates of deposit. And God has told them to put on a uniform that keeps themselves covered because whatever's covered is unseen and the value is there. Whenever you expose it, everybody has lost the value because it becomes common. So the women should see themselves differently and we should see women, our women, as differently. And so God has ordered them to cover themselves. But ordering them doesn't mean that if they don't cover themselves somehow or another, uh, uh, we should speak bad to them or disrespect them. It's their choice as a human being. And so people should put things into context and not label people from, you know, media reaction. Now, the next question that I have for you, Sheikh, is that many people, when you say Islam, and they think that we're trying to take pe people back to the Stone Age, riding camels, you know, uh, you, when you become Muslim, you got to wear a turban, look like an Arabic, Arab you know, that it is not relevant to today's society. How would you tackle this misconception? Well, um, you know, Hollywood, Bollywood, Charliewood, or Nollywood, you know, that's Nigerian TV or Chinese TV or Indian TV or American TV or movies or media, uh, they create fiction um, uh, and, and create fiction almost like it's fact. So when people say that the Quran is irrelevant, I say that how can rain become irrelevant to a farmer? Rain 
5,000 years ago had the same relevancy, it has the same relevance. Well, rain is just like revelation. So the revelation of the Quran, which is legislation from the Creator, is just relevant today. But it's people who have contemporary thoughts, people who are intellectual today, who have to relate the values and the issues and the critical uh, issues of today, make them relevant. And the Quran is a living book. It's not a dead book. It's not an ancient book. It's a living book for all time because God knows the past and the future. And so it's up to us as Muslims to take the verses of the Quran, the values and the principles of the Quran, and to relate them to finding solutions for contemporary uh, issues and, and circumstances. The time is so short, and we yes. just wanted to clear some of the misconceptions. There are many, and possibly, you know, we didn't cover one or two that might be on the minds of some of the people, but just from listening to some of these, these are some of the major ones. So you made sense of it, and it, 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 it's... God willing, having some people reflect, but now they want to know, okay, all right, what is Islam calling me to? What's the benefit of Islam for society? And me as an individual, you know, if I accept this way of life, what, what good will it bring in my life? Well, look, I mean, since the economy, you know, is supposed to be one of the number one issues, unfortunately, you know, it's made the number one issue by greedy and materialistic people. But let's just take the economy since that's a major critical concern of all people, right? Well, look, the Quran forbids us, God forbids us from doing compounded interest transactions. And so people would, would, pe people would not be in such debt uh, if they was not be, being uh, taken advantage of, okay, by compounded interest. And so if I were to say to people, listen, uh, if you just took a course of Islam 101, just take a course in Islam 101, uh, and after doing so, uh, what we'll do for you is, uh, we'll take the debt that you have that, where you lost your house, we'll give you your house back, we'll manage that debt for you, but for now on, don't buy any credit cards and allow us to manage your debt without interest. Uh, would you be willing to take that Islam 101 course? Of course you would. And if you found out, you know what I mean, that, uh, that you could live prosper, uh, prosperously, you could have prosperity, then w would you be concerned uh, with that benefit to life? Of course you would. So I think that uh, this is a principle of Islam. Islam will liberate you from debt. Islam will liberate you from debt. And if people understood that they could be liberated from debt, they would consider to become Muslims tomorrow. Amazing, amazing. Tell us now, we got to go uh, for that, again, for those people out there who like what we had to say, and now the junk is being cleared and they're having a better picture. What advice do you have them to continue on and which direction to go, because you know, there might be some more confusion in their minds. What advice do you give for those sincere, humble yeah, truth seekers? Um, I say to um, uh, your um, uh, viewers, uh, whether they are, uh, are local people or the uh, national viewers or people around the world, uh, that you need to, once in your life, take a time uh, to read the Quran. The Quran is available. Either go to the public library or go to Google Gaggle Giggle and download it and take a look at it. Go to Challenge Your Soul or wherever you can. Read the Quran. Uh, for a minute or for an hour or for a day, uh, you'll find that your life will not be the same. Also, look into the life of the most profound human being in the world, in the annals of history, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. I think, again, when you compare him with any human being in history, you'll find that his personification uh, is like the moon in the middle of the night. Uh, that's what I would recommend. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you we so We started very much. with peace, we end with yes, peace. Sir. Thank you and very much. the creator, God Almighty, in Arabic, we say Allah rewards you. Thank you so much. Thank brother. you. Salam alaikum. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. We hope that you got to benefit. We got to clear many of the mistruths that were out there. Continue to join us every week here on The Dean Show for another exciting show. Until then, peace be unto you. Hope you have enjoyed this episode. And I hope that you will think and reflect upon some of the things you have seen. See you next week. Same day, same time. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you.